Another coaching hire, another special edition of PFTPM aimed at talking about what we know and what it all means. Early in the spinning of the coaching carousel, we posted at PFT an item that was attempting to match vacancies with candidates based upon generally what was making its way around the NFL grapevine at the time. When we got down to the Panthers, the best guess that a high-level source with knowledge of the overall machinations of the coaching carousel said, who the F knows? Well, now we do know. It's Dave Canales, reportedly. Multiple different reports say they're closing in on Canales. Now, that doesn't mean it's done. It's not done until it's done. We've seen that before. No reason to think, though, it will fall apart once you say, this is our guy. It is surprising, though, because they were reportedly meeting with Mike Vrabel today. Did they meet with Vrabel? Did they cancel the meeting with Vrabel? What and why and how did they come to this conclusion that Canales is the guy when they either were about to talk to Vrabel or were fresh from talking to Vrabel or who knows? Maybe they were never going to talk to Vrabel. Maybe it was all just posturing aimed at making people think they weren't at the end of the road. And that's what I wonder about with a guy like Canales. When you look at his history, he came with Pete Carroll from USC. He was strength coach at USC. Went to the Seahawks in 2010, Carroll's first year, was receivers coach for a while, then was quarterbacks coach, passing game coordinator, back to quarterbacks coach for 2022, went to Tampa last year, worked with Baker Mayfield, obviously did a great job and great enough to become the first choice of the Carolina Panthers. I wonder if they moved the way they did because they thought maybe the Seahawks would be making a move to bring Canales back. And the other wrinkle here, and I don't know whether or not the Buccaneers thought about this but if i'm the panthers and i'm ready to make my move with canales maybe i don't want the buccaneers to realize that it's imminent that your offensive coordinator is going to be jumping to a team in the division because what happened eight years ago in tampa bay one of the surprise firings that occurred out of the blue lovey smith dumped by the bucks dirk cutter who had been linked to other head coaching jobs after one year with Jameis Winston working well together, the Bucs decided let's just make that guy the head coach and allow him to continue to work with Jameis Winston. It ultimately didn't work out for the Buccaneers and for Cutter, but maybe the Panthers thought we got to do a little bit of a shell game here. We got to do a little misdirection. We got to make them think we still have time to go before we make a final decision, even if we've already made that final decision. Regardless, Canales is the guy, and they wanted an offensive guy. That was some of the reporting that happened immediately in the aftermath of the firing of Frank Reich, another offensive coach. They want to get the most they can out of Bryce Young. And, I mean, to the extent that Canales worked with Baker Mayfield, who's under six feet, Russell Wilson, who's under six feet, he's got experience helping quarterbacks function in offenses where the circumstances would suggest the quarterback isn't seeing over the line of scrimmage. So, there's that link. Regardless, though, that's job number one for Dave Canales and the Carolina Panthers. They have to show that they did the right thing in trading up to draft Bryce Young. So far, they look ridiculous because Young did not do well. And C.J. Stroud, the player on whom they passed, is probably going to be the offensive rookie of the year and already maybe one of the top five, seven or ten quarterbacks in the entire NFL and obviously took the Texans to the final eight, just as Mayfield and Canales did with the Buccaneers. So. Expectations are going to be low externally. The problem is internally, you're dealing with an owner who clearly wants to win, who clearly gets upset when things don't go his way, who would be inclined to throw a drink on somebody when things don't go his way. And you've got to accept the fact if you take that job that you're going to be dealing with the owner on a regular basis. Now, maybe the owner is making promises about stepping back and not meeting with the coach on a regular basis, communicating with the coach on a regular basis, asking a bunch of questions, getting in the way of what the coach is trying to do. Maybe he's promised to do that. It's one thing to promise it. It's another thing to do it. The relationship's never going to be any better than it is on the day the relationship is struck. And shame on the coach who takes a job thinking that David Tepper is going to be different when we've seen during his years with the Panthers, he can't help himself. He thinks he can work hard enough he thinks he can want it enough he thinks he can get upset enough when things don't go his way that they can force success onto a team that has not had much of it really since 
going to the Super Bowl in 2015. They're trying to get back to that. They're trying to do it with Bryce Young. They'll do it with Dave Canales as the head coach. I have a feeling we'll be talking about the Panthers hiring another head coach sooner rather than later, just based upon David Tepper's history. But we'll see. Maybe he'll prove us wrong. Maybe Canales will be the guy for more than two or three years. Maybe he'll be the guy for more than five or seven years. Maybe he'll be the long-term answer. They're going to have to win quickly, and they're going to have to win with Bryce Young for Canales to stick around more than we saw Matt Rule or Frank Reich. We'll continue to keep track of all coaching vacancies and efforts to find new coaches. It's getting down to three teams at this point. There's always a chance another team is going to join the list. We'll have it all covered at profootballtalk.com. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you real soon. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.